question one of the SBR exam is on group accounts with a pre-populated spreadsheet. And this was debuted in September 23. My name is Tom Clendon and I help students pass their SBR examination. And what you're about to watch is me debriefing the answer to this particular question. It's available on the ACCA practice platform on Test Reach. You should only be continuing to watch this video if you have already gone and done the question. That way you will benefit and understand what I'm doing in debriefing this question. But if you've done the question already, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. You probably didn't get it entirely correct. And I want to show you how I approach the question, how we can pick up the low hanging fruit and what the right answer is and what the right approach is to this particular question. I hope you enjoy the video. September 23, question one, auto. And the initial information tells us that our year end is 31st March X6 and that we've got these four exhibits, trailer, Z, trailer and the draft accounts. Now, looking at the requirement of the question, it's, it's laid out really nicely because in part A, you're using exhibit one. You're answering part A, calculating the goodwill of trailer, talking about the impairment of, ta of trailer relates to part A, relates to exhibit one. In answering part B, we're relating to exhibit two. In other words, in order to answer part A, I don't need to read exhibit two. But in order to answer part C, I need to read exhibit three. So one thing at a time, I'm just going to concentrate on exhibit one for part A. Calculate the goodwill arising on the acquisition of trailer and explain how we should assess whether the goodwill is impaired. I would control copy paste my requirements and drop it into my word processor. I have done this already. And now I need to look at the information in exhibit number one, and I'm calculating the goodwill on the acquisition of trailer. And this is worth three marks. I have bought on the 1st of April, the beginning of the year, 80% of the shares of trailer. There are 15 million shares. The consideration is cash and a one for 10 share exchange when the market price was five. The fair value of the net assets are 40. NCI is measured as a proportion of net assets. So there doesn't seem to be, to me, um, any great, it's not a step acquisition. It's not in a foreign currency. Yeah, we're picking up on the parents' investment. Now, the cash that we've paid is 45. Yeah, cash that we've paid there is 45. So we're dealing with millions, 45, cash paid. We've then got a share for share exchange. So we're then picking up on the shares that we have issued. These must be recorded at fair value. It's a one share for 10. And yeah, so we're issuing one share for 10. We are buying 80% of the shares. The number of shares that they have are 15 million. And each share is going to be worth $5. So we're leaving a beautiful audit trail. We're taking 10% of the 80%. We're multiplying that by 15 and then we're multiplying that by five. And therefore we get the fair value of the consideration that we've given is six. Now, NCI is measured as a proportion of net assets. That's what the question says. It's an 80% subsidiary. So we're looking at what 20% of the net assets are and the net assets are given to us in the question at 40 and therefore we have the figure of 
8. 20% of 40 is 8. Away from this, we then deduct the net assets, and the net assets are being deducted at 40. So 45 minus 40 is 5. 5 and 6 is 11, 19. The goodwill that we have arising on the date of acquisition is 19. Three marks. I think that's basically FR. I would really like to think that you got three out of three. Yes, you could have done this in a spreadsheet. No problem. No problem. If it's quicker and easier for you to do it in a spreadsheet, do it in a spreadsheet. But make sure you leave a little bit of an audit trail. Explain how auto should assess whether the goodwill of trailer is impaired in accordance with ISA 36. And what we've got here is no calculations. What we've got here is five marks. What we've got here, therefore, is eight minutes. And this is the information that we know about auto. Let me do a brain dump. What I know is that when we have an impairment review, it is done on an annual basis. What I know that when we have an impairment review, it's about the carrying value exceeding the recoverable amount. What I know is that when we have an impairment review, it's about a cash generating unit um, that we use the goodwill for because we cannot sell the goodwill on its own. I know that auto in this particular case has NCI as a proportion of net assets. And that in turn means that goodwill is going to be attributable to the parent only. And if goodwill is attributable to the parent only, that in turn means that the impairment loss will not affect, yeah, the impairment loss will not impact, yeah, the NCI, will not impact the non-controlling interest. And I also know that when you do an impairment review and NCI is a proportion of net assets, you've got that awkward grossing up. There will be a grossing up of goodwill in the impairment review process. Now look, that's my dump. That's my quick thinking. And now I'm going to go back and just make sure that I write reasonable sentences to get those buzzwords, to get those ideas across. So I will get five out of five. That's what I'm talking about polishing up the little points into proper sentences. I'm challenging the marker to give me a mark for each of those points. There are five marks available. I've got five little mini paragraphs. You don't need to write an essay. You do need to apply it to the question. The goodwill of trailer must be reviewed on an annual basis. Yeah, we're, 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 um, Correcting that because it says auto. Yeah. Trailer has NCI measured as a proportion of net assets. We're articulating. Yeah. What's going on? We're relating it to the question. So please. Yeah. Is there a typo in there? Of course there is. I am moving on. And as I move on, I'm then considering part B of the question. And part B of the question is again wanting words. Calculations are not required. Part B of the question is about division Z. And part B of the question says, using exhibit two, which I've just opened. Yeah. Um, consider whether the assets of Z should be reclassified as held for sale and think about the impairment principles. So we've got two things that we're being asked to deal with. Presumably, this is three marks each. One is about Z. Should it be classified as hell for sale? Yes or no. And then the other is the impairment principles, which should be applied on the reclassification of trailer as hell for sale. Z. 
should it be classified as held for sale? Well, let's have a read. Let's have an understanding. So we're trying to consider whether Z as a division should be classified as held for sale. Um, and we've got this information here. Uh, won't go ahead. There's no obviously inquirer. And this sentence here I find particularly significant because the suggestion is that it's unclear how long the process is going to take. So they've started selling off individual assets and some of them are being abandoned or transferred. And again, in the context of whether or not it's held for sale, I find that particularly relevant. We'll come back and talk about impairment in a minute. So three marks here, I'm thinking. I'm wanting to say something about uh, the general theory uh, and then I'm wanting to apply it. Now, what I'm not doing is writing out every single condition. I'm just setting up an overall thing. I've already highlighted, I think, two things here which speak to me very sharply about the conditions. You know, there is, it is uncertain how long it will take. It is uncertain how long it will take. And yet the condition is it's got to be done within 12 months. Yeah. However, for hell to sale. So I'm applying my knowledge to the question. The other thing here is that you're abandoning it. Well, <laughs> you know, assets that are abandoned are not being held for sale. They're not recovered from their sale proceeds. Assets that are abandoned. So that's our three marks. Yeah, we've given a bit of theory. We've done a little bit of application as well. Now, we're also being asked to discuss the impairment principles which should be applied on the reclassification of Taylor, uh, of trailer as held for sale. Trailer has met the criteria, so it would be wrong to rediscuss those criteria. Well, I think what you're doing is basically at classification, you would do an impairment review. But if I'm strict, um, after the classification, you do a further impairment review. Well, you do a further write down to the fair value, less cost to sell. And you charge that against profit if there is a further expense. After for classification, yeah, the asset is written down to fair value, less costs, less cost to sell. And the charge must be made to profit and any charge is to P&L. Fantastic. All right. Fantastic. We are answering this question and we're answering it in the order in which it is set. All right. And we've now done A and we've now done B and we're now looking at answering part C. And part C says, yeah, use exhibit three. Use exhibit three. And there's an awful lot of information, yeah, in respect of exhibit three. And we've got exhibit three on display there now. And this is involved looking at the pre-populated spreadsheet. We got to adjust it. And that's what we're being asked to do. So there's no explanations here. I'm not going to use the, the word here. I've got to do the whole of my answer for C part one on the spreadsheet response option. And we're doing two things. We're looking at the impairment of trailer. We're doing an impairment of trailer. And remember, trailer has correctly been classified as held for sale. Yeah, it's a disposal group. So we're going to have to look at it through IFRS 5 eyes in terms of ultimately the presentation of the remaining assets on the balance sheet. We'll have to separate them out as current assets and current liabilities. But the first thing we're going to do is the impairment on the reclassification of trailer as held for sale. So the impairment of trailer, the impairment of trailer. And we've got a lot of information here in exhibit number three. So let's have a look at the information that we've got in respect of exhibit number three. Auto has acquired 80% of trailer, measuring NCI as a proportion of net assets. 
and they have been consolidated as you would expect on a line by line basis. But we now know that it is held for sale and so we're going to have to take those assets and show them as a single line current assets and a single line current liabilities. Um, they've, they've, they've met, trailer has met the criteria. Yeah, trailer has met the criteria to be classified as a disposal group. That is clear. We've then got trailer as a CGU. So when we're doing the impairment review, we know the assets are 57. Uh, intangibles don't include goodwill. Uh, the goodwill is eight. So the goodwill is eight. Um, the fair value of the assets and the transaction costs. So when we come to sell it, this is going to be our recoverable amount. And then there is some further information here, which is um, in respect of a latter part of the question about the disposal. I don't think it's relevant here to the issue in question. And the issue in question is the impairment review. So because I did my original calculation of goodwill in the word, I haven't got a working here before. This is my first working and this is doing the impairment review. Yeah, and this is the impairment review of trailer. Now, if you're doing an impairment review, you want to know the carrying value of the net assets and the carrying value of the net assets are 57.6. I can see that. It's a cash generating unit. We've got the goodwill and this is not the goodwill of the previous company that we calculated. No, this is this is trailer. This is trailer. And we're told the goodwill of trailer and we're told that the goodwill of trailer is eight. If I put in the goodwill figure there of eight, that is wrong. It is wrong because NCI has been measured as a proportion of net assets. So the goodwill of eight, let's leave an audit trail. The goodwill of eight needs to be grossed up by 100 over 80. You don't need a calculator. You know that figure is 10. You don't need to use the spreadsheet functionality. You know the carrying value is 67.6. Looking at the recoverable amount, the recoverable amount, what are we going to sell the business for? Its fair value less cost to sell is 51.5. Yeah, that's what you're going to sell it for, less than one. So we're putting in a clear audit trail as, yes, you could put it in the cell, but I think it's even clearer to put it here. Yeah, less the, less the selling costs. And then we have here our impairment loss. So this will give us our impairment loss. And mathematically, I make that to be 17.1. Now, you've got to be really careful with this impairment loss because there's quite a lot of technical detail that now I'm about to go into. Because when you think about that impairment loss, that impairment loss has to be, first of all, allocated to the goodwill. So there is 10 which of that 17.1, which is, first of all, allocated to the goodwill. But the goodwill wasn't 10. The goodwill was only effectively 8. So we're going to say there of which 8 goes to retained earnings. There is no charge to the NCI. There is no charge to the NCI. It's been notionally grossed up for the purposes of the calculation. Now that leaves a balance. That leaves a balance that is going to have to be allocated to other assets other non-current assets within the cash generating unit of 7.1. So this is going to be allocated to non-current assets, yeah, within on a pro rata basis. If I look at it, there's not just one asset, there's two. There's plant and there's intangibles. Yeah, you've got two non-current assets that you're going to have to be allocating that to on a pro rata basis and you're going to have to split this with the retained earnings and the NCI. It's only goodwill 
when NCI is measured as a proportion of net assets that you don't have this split. So, yeah, bear with me, but I think I'm going to have to continue with looking at how we're going to be splitting the amount of 17.1 between the, no, 7.1 between the NCI and the retained earnings because that 7.1 is going to be shared out. And the amount we're going to take to retained earnings is going to be 80%. Yeah, so we can put in here our 80% yeah, um, multiplied by our 7.1 and hey presto, magically we get the answer. And then we can put in here also our 20% of the 7.1 and hey presto, we get the answer. Now let's process this before we get too carried away. It's easy for me to get carried away. We've written off the goodwill of eight and we are going to have a column here where we are saying this is the goodwill and we're writing off the goodwill here of eight. So goodwill is coming down. Let's make sure that is a negative. That would be the adjustment. And in the retained earnings, we're saying that that is going to also come down by eight. None of that is charged to the non-controlling interest. When it comes to the uh, when it comes to the um, non-current asset impairment, we're splitting that non-current asset impairment between retained earnings and NCI in 80-20. So we've got a figure of 5.68 to retained earnings. Yeah, 5.68 to retained earnings. And it's a separate column. Don't add them together. Keep it as simple for the marker as possible. And then the amount that is going to the non-controlling interest, the amount that's going to the non-controlling interest is the other figure. Bish bash bosh is 1.42. Excuse me, going a bit too fast for my own good. Yeah, minus 1.42. Don't put the figures in brackets, put them in as minuses. Now we've got to allocate that further impairment loss. We've got to allocate that further impairment loss of 7.1. We've got to allocate that between uh, two parts. We've got to allocate it between on a pro rata basis. Yeah, some of that is going to have to go. Some of that is going to have to go to PPE. And some of that is going to have to go to the intangible. Now, when you look at it, most of it is going to go to PPE because PPE is 51. Yeah, PPE is 51. And intangibles are only 14.6. So let me set out my audit trail. First of all, I'm looking to allocate an impairment loss of 7.1 between the two. Let me deal with the uh, let me deal with the PPE one first. That would make sense. I'm looking to allocate seven point the impairment loss of 7.1 and I'm looking to allocate that in proportion so the amount of the PPE is 51.8 so it's a proportion of that over 51.8 yeah plus 14.6 all right and it's that fraction that we're looking to put in there. Now, to be honest, I'm more comfortable working this out on a calculator than using the spreadsheet. So let me show you what I would do in this situation. The first thing I would do is I would take 51.8 and then I would add it to 14.6 and then that would give me a figure of... Uh, 66.4 which I would then remember 66.4 I would then take 51.8 I 
I would then divide that by 66.4. That would then give me the proportion that related to the PPE. And then I would multiply that by 7.1. And I would put there 5.5. Life is too short for too, too many decimal places. I will put in 5.5 there as the amount that I've done. Now you could put it in a cell if you were good at spreadsheets, but you do run a risk of confusing a marker. That to me lays it out nice and simple. And the intangible, I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky and put it in at five at 1.6 because that is the balancing back to the 7.1. All right. So back I go. I'm writing 5.5 off my PPE. I'm writing 5.5 off my PPE. Yeah, I'm writing off 5.5 in respect to my PPE and I'm writing off 1.6 in respect of my other intangible assets. And you must show it as a minus. You must show it as a minus. Don't leave any doubt as to whether it's a minus or a plus. Don't put it in brackets, show it as a minus. And what we've done here by showing separate columns, I feel comfortable that we are still getting a balance sheet to balance, okay? So we have been doing a series of workings where we have been ascertaining an impairment loss on a cash generating unit, allocating it to the goodwill, writing that off, and we've also been allocating it to the, uh, the, the remainder. But although that is the first part of the requirement to do with a spreadsheet, it's not the final part. We still have a further requirement, and that further requirement is to deal with the presentation of the remaining net assets in accordance with IFRS 5. And this is not straightforward. This is not straightforward. What we've got to get our head around, what we've got to get our head around is under IFRS 5, we've got to rip out these numbers from the accounts and present them in a single line. If I want to be greedy, if I want to be quick, if I want to be aggressive, then in terms of my presentation, I can just start ripping out numbers. The trouble is I can't rip out 51.8 because I've already ripped out 5.5. But I can rip out the inventory of 7.1. I can rip out the trade payables of 3.3, .3, providing I say they are minus. And I can rip out the cash and cash equivalents of 1.6. And then I can allude to the fact that there would be disposal assets that are now going to be included but this is going to have to be another working. I think I'm probably going to call this working three. All right. So bear with me. If the calculation of the impairment loss was working one, and then the allocation of that was working two, I've then got working three for trying to work out the disposal assets. So bear with me on this one. I'm trying to work out what's happening to the disposal assets. I've got my PPE and the amount that of my PPE I'm looking to have to further adjust for is not 51.8. It's 51.8 less the amount that I've written off the PPE already of 5.5. So that's the further adjustment that I need to be making in this situation. It's 51.8 minus 5.5, and I need to take out an additional 46.3. In terms of the intangible, the same principle applies. In terms of the intangible, 
the same principle applies. My apologies. So this was PPE. Let's go back and leave that audit trail. That was 51.8. And then we were taking away the amount that we had written off against that asset, which was 5.5. I mean, it's there in the cell. It's there in the cell. So a marker should be able to follow it. But I do like leaving an audit trail whenever I can to make it absolutely built and braces. Now, the intangible asset, according to the original amount, is 14.6. But of that 14.6, we've already written off, yeah, 1.6. So I don't think I need a calculator. I don't think I need a cell for that. Yeah, I just think I know that that is 13. What we're also doing in this context, what we're also doing in this context is we are removing 7. We are removing 7.1. We've also removed here. 3.3 we've also removed here 1.6 and what I want to therefore have is the total of my disposal assets this is going to give me the total of my disposal assets so I can therefore within the spreadsheet functionality get the sum and effectively get here C75 yeah, colon, yeah, C75, colon to C79, and close brackets, and hey presto, I have got there my disposal assets of 71.3. So it's 46.3 and 13. It's 46.3 and 13. It's 46.3 and 13. 13 that we are removing so that there's no record in continuing assets, non-current assets, because they're not non-current assets. They're going to be held for sale. They're not going to be there next year. That's why we are removing them. But we've got to include them and we've got to include them effectively as disposal assets. And those disposal assets, we've aggregated it to be 71.3. Back I go, forward I go, those disposal assets there in this presentation column, and it's a plus. You're bringing in those disposal assets of 71.3. Now, the borrowings, the liabilities, you've got to do exactly the same calculation or presentation, I should say, but I don't think we need to fuss too much. The long-term borrowings, let's make sure I use the right column. It is F. Yeah, so the long-term borrowings. We are removing the long-term borrowings here, minus 18.5. So we're stripping those out. At the same time, we are removing the trade and other payables, which is 2.3. We are stripping those out. My mental maths can add those together. Look, we've got disposal liabilities in there, mentioned already, put in there. And the aggregate of those two need to be added in. So that is 20.8. That is 20.8. Bish, bash, bosh. What I have been doing here is worth 12 marks. Yeah? What I have been doing here is worth 12 marks. And I've got 12 out of 12. It's not beyond the wit of imagination to realise, yeah, that you've got there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Yeah, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's a maximum number of marks that you can earn. Yeah, this is worth 12 out of 12. Fundamentally, when you're putting in a number that is correct, you're getting a mark. What you do not get marks for, what you do not get marks for is the total corrected column. Yeah, any model answer you see will add these numbers up. Any model answer you see will add these numbers up, will cross cast. I am not doing that because I don't want you to do it. Why don't want I you why don't I want you to do it? Because it doesn't get you any marks. Time is so precious in the exam. You can't double check that your balance sheet balances. You've got to trust. 
You've got to move on. Just move on. Now, have we finished this question? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. I remember there is still a part C2 of the question. And this says, using exhibit three, calculate the consolidated profit on the disposal of the shares for marks. Now, it's not a foreign sub. If it was a foreign sub, there'd be some sort of recycling of the foreign exchange difference. That is not the case. So what we've got going on here is proceeds. What we've got going on here is removing the net assets. What we've got going on here is removing the goodwill. What we've got going on here is de-recognizing the NCI, but it would be a plus. What we've got going on here is introducing any residual value. This then will give us our profit to the group. Now, the information is down here. The information is down here. The impairment has taken place on the 31st of March X6. And actually, we wrote off all of the goodwill at that time, didn't we? So there is no goodwill to write off. Negotiations have taken place. We're selling it now in June X6. We're selling it now in June X6. So we're selling it a couple of months later. And in the meantime, we've earned an extra 1.5 million profit, which would have plumped up the net assets. We're selling 90% of the investment. Our investment was 80%. So we're selling 90% of that 80%, which is therefore 72%. So that means we have a residual holding, which will end up being 8%. Make sure you're comfortable with that. We owned 80%. We sold 90%, which is 72%. Therefore, we're left with 8%. Uh, we sold it for proceeds of 48. We sold it for proceeds of 48. Uh, the remaining investment was held to have a fair value of $5.2 per share an 8% holding of 15 million shares. And each of those shares are worth $5.20. Let's just make sure we've got our ducks in order there. If we were doing this in the spreadsheet, we could obviously put those in the cells. But the information is down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's $5.20 per share. Remember that you've got overall 50 million shares. So let's use our calculator again. Yeah, let's use our calculator again and say what we're looking at there is 8%, not 80%, so it's 0 0.8, 8% of 15. And this is multiplied here by 5.2. And therefore, that gives us a figure here of the residual holding being 6.24. If you got this far, you've passed. It's four marks. We've got two of the numbers there, two out of four. Yeah, got the layout. We've got the low hanging fruit. Now, how much of the net assets? I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a look at our spreadsheet. At the date of the disposal, the assets were 71.3. Uh, no, that wasn't at the date of disposal. That was several months before. And actually, when I come to think of it, it, you want the net assets, don't you? So it's the assets that you're disposing of, of 71.3. You're also disposing of the liabilities at that time. And the liabilities, the disposal liabilities were 20.8. So you're taking out the 20.8. But then you've made the profit. Yeah, because there was a reference to profit in note number three, since the date of the balance sheet, when the assets were 71 and the liabilities were 20, we've made an additional profit of 1.5. So we would add here the profit of 1.5. Once again, I feel a little calculator coming on because I've elected in this case not to use the spreadsheet just to sort of slow me down a little bit and just to make sure that you can follow exactly what I'm doing. So what are we doing here? We are taking 
20.3. We're taking away 20.8. And then we are adding 1.5. So I can see already it's going to be 52. Yeah, so the answer there is 52. Having got the 52, own figure rule would apply. In other words, the non-controlling interest is just your 20%. Yeah, of whatever that figure is, 20% and that figure is 52. 20% of 52, I happen to be reasonable at mental maths. I know that to be 10.4. Now, purely as an aside, oh, I suppose you want to know what the profit is on the disposal. And ultimately, you've already earned the four marks. But on this occasion, I will humor you. I will humor you. We ought to be making sure that we present that in our table as a minus so that we know what's going on. So what have we got there? We've got effectively minus four. We've got 16. Yeah, so we've got there 12.64. I'm comfortable with that. As a pure aside, you are keeping 8%. Yeah? You never owned 20%. And what you're selling was 90% of your 80%. So you're selling 72%. It is not a coincidence. There's no marks in this, by the way. I'm just doing this for fun and for your demonstration of understanding. Ultimately, that's 100%. Yeah? The three figures there which are positive in the disposal calculation is the proceeds. That's your selling 72%, the 20%, and the 8%. The bit you are selling, the bit you never owned, and the bit you kept. They add up to 100%. And that is not, I repeat, not worth any marks, nor is it um, a coincidence. It is always the case. It is always the case. Nor do you gain any marks for just kind of making that look a little bit prettier and putting a million dollars there. You must continue to move on. But I have prepared this answer. And I genuinely believe that this answer, well, I know it's correct. I know I haven't done anything wrong. And I genuinely think this answer is going to be worth, you know, 28, 29 out of 30. I'm sure there's a little bit of incompleteness and a little bit of harshness that could go somewhere. I'm not going to claim that it's going to be 100% correct, but this is better than the prize winner. Yeah. That's my, that's my goal. This is better than the prize winner. And I hope I've tried to show you in the approach that I've taken, yeah, how you can approach the spreadsheet, how you can answer the question and pick up the marks. You must write. And I think where you write is in the uh, word response area, in the word processor area. And the spreadsheet is good for your numbers. The spreadsheet is good for your numbers. Do not add up the spreadsheet. Do not. But reference things. Show your workings on the spreadsheet. Label what you're doing. I think, I think it's clear. I think it's clear. Yeah. If it's clear to you, it's going to be clear to a marker as to what is going on. Yeah. Just but leave that little bit of audit trail, please. Thank you for listening. If I can help you in any way, shape or form, get in touch. Yeah, WhatsApp me. All right, WhatsApp me. 07725350793. My name is Tom Clendon. I help students pass SBR.